All right, all marketing starts at the who, so so are we. Okay, this is how I find my dream customer. Now, these are six criteria that my dream customer has to hit in order to become a dream customer. Okay, there are these six different things. I'm going to walk through them quickly because that's not really the focus of this event itself, but you do need to have them in mind when we actually start making the offer. Okay, so the first thing is I figure out, first of all, who do I want to sell? And this is more important than any other criteria. Okay, who do you want to work with? About two years ago, I woke up and I realized I hated my customer right? And I just didn't have enough focus on who I wanted to sell. So I was selling anybody who had the money. That's not enough criteria to become a dream customer. Just because you can pay for it doesn't mean I should sell you. And you should think about it in the same manner, okay? It's not just about cash. Who do you want to work with is so much more important than any other piece. I want to build something that I like, that I like the people I like, right? And so I'm very strict on this part of it. Okay. So first of all, who do you want to work for, uh, do things with? Second of all, you have to ask, I need to know this about my dream who. In my mind, what are they already trying to achieve? What this does is it helps me figure out how to go talk to people who are already in motion. Some people are just not in motion, right? Um, <clears throat> how many of you guys have tried to convert friends and family to an entrepreneur? <laughs> me too. Doesn't work. And don't try it. Um, you guys know Stacy Martino, Stacy Paul Martino? She did this thing once where she's like, all right, everyone, take your right hand, put your right hand out. Put your right hand out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This represents everybody who's your friends, your family, the people who raised you, the people who've helped you learn and grow as a human being, an adult, right? Now, everyone, put your left hand out. This represents entrepreneurs. This represents all the people that you re energize with. Don't do this. <laughs> and I was like, ah. That makes sense. She's like, stop trying to convert all your friends. <laughs> right? It stresses them out, stresses you out, and then you're just going to create isolation and distance. Right? And that was a huge piece of advice for me. <laughs> okay? But there are people out there who are not already in motion. And I don't want to try to sell or create marketing for someone who's not already moving. I should not be their life coach. <sighs> you know what I mean? Anyone realize that they're selling people and being a life coach as a side business? <laughs> right? This is what helps me negate against that. So I get to sell somebody who's actually moving forward. <laughs> okay, now I want to run a little experiment here with you guys. This is the third thing. This is very, very key. Uh, pretend that you are now Russell Brunson and you have been bequeathed ClickFunnels. You own ClickFunnels now. Congratulations, you're all Insta billionaires. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, I, now you have all the burdens with that as the CEO. And what's the CEO's primary responsibility? to build and manage systems, okay? That's what a CEO does. What does a CMO do? Create customers, right? So you gotta go figure out how to create customers. So we're gonna ask this question. Who, which customer is likely to have faster success with ClickFunnels? Somebody who's coming from Wix or somebody who's coming from lead pages? Why? They're already, people from Wix may not know what a lead is. <laughs> you know what I mean? They might not know what a squeeze page is. They just want to have a pretty website. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Now, this is one of the biggest reasons why people have a hard time selling their offer after they've built it. They don't know the answer to this question themselves about their own product. Okay, you have to think about it this way. If you have a golf ball, uh, if you have a golf hole, let's say it represents the sale, you got to sell people that are already close to the hole, <laughs> right? That's it. They need this much education in order to sell them. Sometimes people have this golf ball that's like 12 miles away and they're like, you could be a customer. You're right, but you could have a terrible business that's not fun to run, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And so this is, this is how we negate that. Customer education is the key to finding your dream customer. Customer education is the key. How much do they already know? Okay. I was watching an episode of Shark Tank and uh, Robert Kurjavec, however you say his last name. Anyway, they were all talking to this awesome entrepreneur. The guy, this guy came in and um, <clears throat> they loved him. They loved his product. They loved everything about him. And at the very last moment, the guy's about to get funded for like millions of dollars. This is a huge deal. Robert dribbles out this piece of gold that lands on the floor. And I was like, oh my gosh. They said, we love you. We love everything about you. We love the product. We love, your story's incredible. This is amazing stuff. I can't believe what you built. Look what you invented. I mean, you've really created a brand new thing, but it would take millions of dollars to educate the market enough to want to buy that. 
not to buy it, to want to buy it. And I was like, oh my gosh, remember that, okay? How close do you have enough dream customers where you only gotta tell them, like, why do I sell the ClickFunnels market? What do they already know? Funnels, I, I'm, I should not be their funnel education. ClickFunnels should. So I'm just picking them up from a certain education level. Does that make sense? Yeah. Way easier to build a sustainable business like this. Way easier, okay? So there's a direct correlation between how much they already understand and how expensive it will be to sell them. There's a direct correlation between how much they already understand and how hard it will be to make them successful. So if someone's never heard of a funnel before, but they have the money to come hire me on stuff, like that's why I turned Tony Robbins down, okay? When he, he and I sat down and we chatted on the couch and it was cool and he said yes to me building the funnel, I pitched him. I was like, what can I do? I always ask myself a question whenever I'm in like a cool scenario. I can't exactly say the words because it's not part of my branding, but <laughs> how can I be a bad A right now? <laughs> That's what I ask. So I was sitting in front of Robert, or, uh, Tony Robbins and we were chatting and he's huge and his hands are like engulfing mine, you know, and, and, um, and I was like, hey, you know that cool thing you're going on doing? How about I build your funnel? And he, he was like, yeah, let's talk about that. That was cool. Let's jump on the phone. And as I thought about it more and more and more, and I started thinking about all the Marcus Lemonis for the profit and doing stuff with Robert Kiyosaki. And we did do a few things with Tony Robbins. None of the projects went very well. Because what, what do they not know? Funnels. What, I mean, when um, <coughs> Gary V came and spoke, and he didn't know what a funnel was when he landed. That would be a terrible customer. I don't care that it's Gary Vee. That is not enough of a criteria for me to go do something. You gotta get strict like that on that. And then there were several people who made a lot of fun of me because I said no to them. But I don't want that kind of business. I've had several people pitch a million dollars for a single funnel. Oh, sucks. No, okay. The first funnel I built for Russell as his employee was for a guy who paid a hundred grand for the funnel. The dude thought he owned us. And it was not a good experience. You're looking for what is the client right, to provider relationship as much as you are everything else. And this, this piece right here, I can't emphasize it enough. Okay, what do they already know? <clears throat> um, goals to find customers close instead of super far. Okay, anyone get in a ha off that one? <laughs> super key. Find the market you serve, and then talk to the people who only need a little bit to buy and have success. And that will massively uh, improve your business. Uh, a little while ago, um, Russell Vox and he said, hey dude, do you, you freaking geek out about offers and market positioning and selection and all that. Do you want to write a chapter for Expert Secrets? I was like, sure. I mean, you can say no to that. I was like, yeah, right? <laughs> so all Christmas break was basically spent on that. And this is what I wrote. And this next part is very, very key. And this is the part you wanted me to put in there. <clears throat> okay, the next piece of criteria is whoever I'm selling needs to be frustrated already. Okay, there's a lot of old school marketing uh, copywriting courses, I should say, that start by saying, Agitate the problem, that way your solution has more value. I hate that. What if they're already frustrated? I don't have to get them frustrated in order for them to buy. Make sense? So there are three kinds of people. If this represents a market, okay, <laughs> the little building thing right there, that represents a market and there's all these people hanging around there and go there to buy and sell and exchange goods, okay? There's three kinds of people. The first is the diehard. And the diehard, like I'm a ClickFunnels diehard, right? <laughs> you all know, uh, uh, right? People who've tattooed ClickFunnels logos to their bodies, right? Those are diehards, right? <laughs> they enjoy fighting about the product. I don't know another viable option to ClickFunnels and I don't care to know. So when someone else walks up and they're like, hey, you wanna see something better in ClickFunnels? No, but I would love to fight you about it, <laughs> right? That's a diehard. And most of the time, when someone says, would you come review my funnel? Or would you come look at my offer? They wrote their copy, they made their message, they built the offer for a diehard. It's not that they, they're going to the wrong market. They're talking to the wrong person in the market. And they're trying to sell diehard because they are also a diehard. How many of you guys are diehards about what you do? Good, but you can't sell a diehard. They're rough. It's like two opposing teams in the Super Bowl, right? Two fans sitting next to each other, no one wins, everyone ends up mad, right? See what I'm talking about? So when someone comes up like, well, you I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> in fact, um, Austin, there was a guy who reached out to us. You remember this? Uh, who was the support ticket who reached out asking if they could build funnels? You, you, uh, yeah, we, maybe we shouldn't say the who, but, <laughs> or the name. Um, they reached out and they were, they were asking, 
they wanted to build me an info product. <laughs> like, you did not do your research. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a diehard selling a diehard. Doesn't work. Okay. Selling these kinds of people requires a major identity shift. And it is terrible. Don't try to sell them. The next kind of person is somebody who I call, they, I call them the satisfied. The satisfied is an individual who they're not in enough pain to switch or even listen to you. They're having enough success with the current things in the market that it doesn't warrant even, uh, you know what? I don't know that I want this. You actually know you're selling somebody like this when they are price shopping you, when they're going out questioning everything inside your offer, its value. Is it really valued at this level? Have anyone ever had that happen to you? Like in chat, like, well, how come it's valued at this level? You're selling a satisfied. Right? I'm, I hate the price shopping thing. Look, I know I'm good. I'm going to charge a lot. And when someone comes out and, and they uh, start saying like, hey, and this bonus, this, I don't even answer them. Okay? I don't. I'm like, oh, this is a satisfied. You understand that the way you bring somebody into your business often describes your relationship after you sell them. So if I have to beg them to buy, I will beg them throughout fulfillment and it's terrible. If I have to come in and they're price shopping me and they're nickel and diamond and they're going to, Oh, it means the same attitude is going to get mirrored in my fulfillment. Not fun. Terrible who? Last part is the frustrated. This is the dream customer in the market that I choose. This is somebody who's actively seeking a new solution, right? They hate their current product. They're aware that they hate their current product. And selling them just requires usually a new alternative. They just don't know another one. This, this, this is awesome. Okay. I'm interested to know how many of you guys have tried to build a funnel and click funnels? Most of your hands are up. That's who I target. Yeah, yeah, right, does that make sense? How many of you guys get a little bit frustrated with it sometimes? You're in the right room, okay? Case in point, <laughs> I'm not trying to go for the new ClickFunnels user. I want them to know my face, so I do a lot of stuff with one funnel away, all right? But I'm, not, I'm waiting for it to germinate, and I'm waiting for the person who starts to get frustrated to pop out the other side and say, you know, I know this can work, and it does right? But I just need some more help. There we go. Okay. Make sense? Anyone going to upgrade their customer now? Does that make sense though? How you guys can go apply that inside your own business? So, so helpful. So helpful to put these filters in. Um, there was a, uh, I actually really wanted to go get an MBA after a while because I didn't know how to make money. I didn't know how to do well in school. And when I finally learned how to do it, it was this big accomplishment, right? And so I went and I started learning all this stuff. There was this theory that they taught us called, it's called the, the diffusion. Can I get my, uh, white, uh, my, uh, <laughs> my whiteboard? <coughs> it's called the, the, how many of you guys have heard of the law of the diffusion of innovations? Yeah, okay, so the diffusion of innovations says this, right? Of new technologies that come into the marketplace, this is usually what happens to them. It's a bell curve, okay? Looks kind of like this, okay? And the first 3% of buyers, they're the psychos, man. They're the diehards. They're the ones with the twitch in the eye, the ones that go sleep in front of Apple when they could just wait a week and get it then. You know what I mean? Those are the, that, these guys, uh, um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I'm gonna call them the diehards. But it ends up being like 3.2%, I think it was the number, okay? The next, like, 13%. There we go. <laughs> That's like 13%. These are part of the early adopters. They are the ones that are excited but go a week later, right? Super, super key. Now, there's this huge, it's called the early majority. The early majority is like, it's like another 17% or something like that, 17, 30%. I mean, it's a huge amount of, of people. They only buy when they see these people buy. So who are these people? Influencers, okay? The late majority go and they pick it up, that second part there. And then the very last tail in are the people are, the only reason they got a phone, like an iPhone, is because they don't sell rotary phones anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're the laggards. That's what they're called. They're, they're the people who are like ticked that they can't like, you know, with the phone, <laughs> right? So like, dang it, what's the next best thing? And so what you're trying to, what I'm, I'm helping you realize, I'm hoping you guys see, is that if this represents your market and you got a huge chunk or you got a piece of them that are the diehards, you got a lot of them that are the satisfied. You're selling the frustrated, but really you're selling just a few percentages of the frustrated. Like, it's not this math. I always, it drives me nuts on Shark Tank when they're like, well, the market, there's going to be 15 million new pieces of tech purchased in this market this next year. Like, 
awesome, but hopefully your market is not that big. Okay, you shouldn't be trying to sell those many, that many people, that's crazy. You should be trying to sell a percentage of the percentage of the percentage way, way down there, and suddenly the game gets a lot easier. And you're like, oh, it's just this finite group, and that's all. Does that make sense? Helpful? Okay, this is, this is way easier to pull off the way. We can go back to my slides now. <coughs> okay. All righty. Um, okay, so that's, the, that's that one. They already have to be frustrated. They, need to be, they have to be aware of their current uh, frustration. Okay, number five, they already have to be a buyer. I love this quote, Dan Kennedy. I've often said a buyer is a buyer is a buyer. What I mean is that once a person proves their willingness and ability to buy a product or service, they are the most likely prospects to purchase more of that product or service. Think of all the books on your shelves on the same topic. The woman who owns 50 pairs of shoes is certainly a better prospect for, for a 51st pair of shoes than the woman who owns none. The difference between zero and a dollar is ridiculous. Okay, I should not be their first purchase in the market. I do not want that. And you shouldn't be either. It means you got to train up. There's all these like false beliefs you got to help them break through. The external based objections are monstrous for someone who's never bought anything yet. You want someone who's practiced overcoming them. <coughs> okay. Finally, they need to buy through my funnel. Um, I know I've shared this story several times, but it illustrates the point well. Um, I had a person reach out who was looking at my offer, and I could already tell that they were a diehard slash satisfied. And he says, Steve, I'm looking at your offer right now. What ROI will you guarantee if I do this? I was like, what? And I was like, huh? Right? She's like, like if I bought, how much money will you guarantee I make? And I said, uh, nothing. I don't know you at all. I have no idea how hard you work. I have no nothing about you. This probably, and I said, this probably isn't for you. Yeah. And I fired her. <laughs> and she was like, are you serious? And I said, no, no, you're forward, right? <laughs> And the reason is because of what I was just saying, um, I'm not the funnel. The funnel's the funnel, right? And unless I was planned to be part of the funnel, people who DM me, who reach out, this event, guys, right now, there's probably 50 people who've reached out to me asking if there's a ticket. I'm not the funnel, okay? <laughs> and it's not to be rude, but like, I don't know how else I can be loud about it. I mean, we posted, we put it all over the place, and I said, buy a ticket, buy a ticket. Like, it's gonna, <laughs> anyway, because I'm not the funnel. And so if you're not part of the funnel, this is how you build a lifestyle and a business at the same time. Otherwise, it takes you. How many of you guys are in that right now and it's taken you? And you're like, I gotta build some walls and get a life back again, you know what I mean? I love what I do, but it's taken me, okay? I'm not the funnel. Um, when you design and build a sales funnel, that doesn't necessarily mean it always has to be through pages itself. But if you're not part of it, like for OfferLab, right now we have a funnel out there that's selling OfferLab and I am part of the funnel, personally. When someone comes and they... Um, apply to join it. First of all, we vet them very hard on all these criteria. And then what we do is we say, um, yeah, after Derek reaches on out to them, then I go and I reach out as well. And I look at their application and I personally email them and I say, hey, um, and I make conversation about their application. That's a planned thing. So it's cool. I'm fine with that. But when someone's like, hey, this $30 thing, Will it do this? Will it do this? Will it do this? What guarantee will you give me? Like, oh, it's not worth the $30. I'm not, we're not going to make money on this anyway. Yeah, I can already tell this is not going to be a great relationship. Make sense? You can fire customers. <laughs> so here, here's, the, um, here's the six, though, all in one shot. And all marketing starts at the who. So we're just going to spend a few minutes here, and I want you guys to answer these questions and get very, very strict. Because this part, once you have it, 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 the rest of it really starts to just kind of fall in place because you've gotten really, really key on who you want and don't want. A do not do list is as important as a do list, right? All right, sound good? We're gonna take 10 minutes. We're gonna go and answer these six questions so you guys have clarity on who you sell. <laughs>